singing and welcome to Word Alive. That cup of coffee looks good, doesn't it? I just had a sip of mine. I hope you've had yours. And today we're going to have a good time on the broadcast. I want you to stay tuned. I'm standing here with our prayer partners. And of course, throughout this hour, you can call for prayer. And we're going to be praying over the requests that are called in. Uh, already, folks are taking advantage of that opportunity. The number to call is 502 962 9650. That's on your screen. Also, we have a toll free number. You can call 888-613-6080. We want to be able to pray for you and encourage you in the Lord today. So give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, today being Thursday is the night at the time that we have our uh, evening service here, our midweek service. And I do want to remind everyone that we'll have church tonight, 7 o'clock, at our Minor Lane campus. We want to invite you to come out and join with us. Uh, we have ministry for all ages, from the children all the way through teenagers, and then, of course, our adult service in the sanctuary. Uh, of course, when I say adult service, children are welcome there as well. Uh, I just simply mean we have a variety of ministry available from the nursery all the way up. So we invite you to come, bring your family. Uh, our children's ministry for elementary age is actually happening at our school building. On the back side of that building where the school chapel is, the elementary chapel. Uh, then we have, of course, nursery for the younger children uh, here at our church facility. So we invite you to come be with us, and we'll look forward to seeing you tonight. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. And then, of course, we're going to have a wonderful weekend of services uh, on this regular schedule. And you can find all those at our, uh, our, well, we have a couple of ways. We have our website, worldprayercenter.org. And then, of course, our Facebook page for uh, TV, which is TV Word Alive. Just go to Facebook and search TV Word Alive Like Us so that you'll have ready access. And uh, we can keep you updated about things that are happening. And I'll tell you maybe a little more in the broadcast, but, of course, we've got coming up some special broadcasts from the State Fair and some things that will be happening here in Louisville. And we'll be giving you all those details. And, of course, you can recap things that you see here on the broadcast today and at other times. Right now we're going to get started with a song. If you'd like to, take advantage of this opportunity to call us and we'll be praying for you throughout this broadcast. The late sun is sinking fast And my race is nearly run My strongest trials, they now have passed. The race is almost run. Oh, come, the angel band, come and around me stand. Bear To my eternal home I know I'm near The holy rest Of friends and kindred dear I've brushed the dew on Jordan's bank And the crossing must be near
I've almost gained my heavenly home. My spirit softly sings. The holy ones, behold, they come, and I hear the sound of wings. We welcome you back to the broadcast. We're so glad that you're with us today. And don't forget, you can call our partners. They're here in the studio at 502-962-9650. We also have a toll-free number, 888-613-6080. Today, we want to take a few moments and honor a great church leader who's now gone home to be with the Lord. Uh, this particular church leader was not here in America but led an incredible move of God and a revival that swept across the nation of China. And that is the church leader, Samuel Lamb. He's passed away just recently, and Samuel Lamb was a gentleman that uh, experienced communism firsthand. He was imprisoned by the communists for 20 years, and because of his stand for Christ, led a spiritual revolution in China in the underground church that saw some 80 million people come to Christ over that period of time. He is recognized as a hero of the faith, uh, someone that stood up for the things of God and represented righteousness and the cause of Christ to multiply millions of people across China and around the world. So we'd like to take a moment and share with you just a little bit about his life. He passed away this past Saturday at the age of 88. For millions of believers inside and outside of China, and he passed away on August 3rd at the age of 88. Lam was arrested for his Christian faith during one of the first waves of persecution in Mao's China in, 19, in the 1950s. He spent 20 years in Chinese labor camps. After his release, Lam formed a house church and became one of the most influential leaders of China's underground church movement. One of, his, one of his favorite themes was what he called the holy principle of more persecution, more growth. And joining us now is CBN International correspondent Gary Lane. Gary has made several trips to China, and in fact, he met Samuel yes. Lamb. Pastor Samuel, a significant player oh, in huge. the underground church movement, yes, right? Yes. He and Alan Yuen, yeah. I think, were probably the, the largest uh, influencers of that movement in the mid 50s. You got to remember, this was a time when China was under the influence of Mao. Yeah. Communism was spreading their control over the government. But he said, no, we're not going to fall under the influence of the communist church. Mm -hmm. We're going to maintain our allegiance to the Lord. Spent 20 years in prison, yet he, he, didn't, he didn't see persecution as a bad thing. No, he didn't. And I asked him about that, George. I yeah. said, Pastor Lamb, tell me about the persecution. How do you view this? And he said to me, you know, before I went to prison, the first time we had 200 members in my church. Yeah. I went to prison. When I got out of prison, it had grown to 900 members. Wow. He said, then the Chinese authorities came and they confiscated the church. After the confiscation, it had grown to 2,000 members. And then he smiled, that, that famous smile of his, and he looked at me and he said, persecution good for church. Yeah. And that was his motto, as, as Wendy had said earlier, uh, more persecution, more growth. You have met him personally. You, you recount a particular incident about this, about the issue of persecution. Sure. What was he like? Tell us about the account that you had. Well, you just you saw the joy of the Lord on his face and that smile that was uh, he's known for. And uh, just a kind and gentle man, very compassionate, but very strong in his faith. And he often preached about Job. Mm -hmm. And he would say, you know, Job suffered, but we can overcome. 
uh, anything that the enemy throws at us, and this church will grow. And he, and he uh, insisted on maintaining his allegiance to an underground church, yeah. not directed by the communist authorities. What's his legacy? I think his legacy is standing firm in the faith, that overcoming faith, and uh, the church growing and maintaining its allegiance to God first and foremost, rather than the state. And I think he's, he's also schooled many young people who have risen up and yeah. uh, will lead the church in the future. And, and to that point, Gary, he's, he's trained a lot of the, the yes. upcoming generation oh, today. And, and talk about the future of the Chinese church today as opposed to the time of, of Mao. Well, it's bright, and I don't think we're seeing the persecution that Lamb saw back in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. Uh, some of that is like limited to local areas, but the church is going to grow. More persecution, yeah. more growth. It'll happen. And, and do you see that, that, that uh, even though there isn't that much persecution yeah. today, you are excited about the numbers of people c turning to the Lord well, in, in China. at least 80 million, maybe 100 million or yeah. so, many every day coming because of the work of men yeah. uh, like, like Samuel, Samuel Lamb. Fantastic. What God. a blessing he was. I know it, you count it as yes. a privilege to have, to have met yes, him. Gary, thank you so much for the thank insight. You. you know, it really gives us a reason to think a little bit about our walk with the Lord here, especially in the United States of America. Sometimes we mistakenly think of persecution is being ridiculed or put down or when an atheist rises up to speak against Christianity. Uh, but the kind of persecution that Samuel Lamb and many of the underground church experienced was incredibly severe and difficult and it's something to challenge all of us as Christians to stand fast in our faith and serve God and let's believe together for great and mighty things and also to remember to pray for the church that's in China. The, the believers there will be strengthened and have the kind of fortitude in their faith that Samuel Lamb exhibited in the course of his life. Well, we're going to take a break here. As we go into this break, I want to share with you a testimony from the Nathan Morris Revival. So we're going to roll into that and some other important information for you following. Nathan, this is Casey. She's from right here in Louisville. She had the problem in her, in her left ear. She could only hear 25% in her left ear. You called her up here and you said you could feel electricity just going through her. She said her, he, her ear just popped and it was almost like water running through her ear. And she said after that, she could hear perfectly well in her ear. She said everything was just so loud. Come you on, give Jesus a loud shout of praise. What happened to you? How long have you been like this? Well, I'm 18 now since, my, since I was born, really. So since you've been born, you, you've been almost deaf in this ear? Ever since I can remember, yes. So how, how bad was, the, was your hearing in this side of your ear? I would say what all the time. I could barely hear out of it. I play the viola, and it's really hard when you just listen out of one ear. And what happened last night? You answered a word that came, and you, you answered it. What happened to you when you came up here? Well, I started shaking really hard. I felt heat all over my body. Especially you felt heat here. all over you. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Tell us what happened. People want to hear. There are people watching right now that want to hear what God did in your life. You stuck your fingers in my ear, and <laughs> then it got really, really hot, and then you let go, and it felt like water was going through my ear. So you felt like something was, like water was running in your ear? Yes. And what has happened since? I can hear perfectly fine now. Oh, you can do better than that. Give Jesus a mighty shout of praise. What would you say? What would you say to those that are watching or that say miracles don't happen? I don't believe in miracles. Do not give up on your praying. I've been praying about this all week and then it actually started to hurt. And then after last night, all the pain went away and now I'm completely healed. Jesus, I give you praise. Lord, use this young woman. Lord, I pray that you use her in healing. Lord, if she's received a miracle, let the power of God fill her right now. Give Jesus a mighty shout of praise. Evangel Christian School, known for excellence in education and spiritual development, has just completed the largest renovation of the facilities and classrooms in the school's history. Parents, now is the time to decide to send your child to a school focused on Christ-centered education with a history of excellence. Call now and speak to one of our admission specialists at 502-968-7744. 
or visit evangelchristianschool.com. When you look back on a lifetime, you remember the things that sometimes you may have felt like they did not make a great difference. And then you realize the legacy you have created is more than you ever imagined. However you want your legacy remembered, we can help. You'll be remembered and honored at Louisville's newest Memorial Park, Crosswater Gardens Cemetery and Memorial Park, helping people just like you display their legacy for generations to come. Join us Saturday night, September 14th, for a special concert with recording artist and NBC's The Voice competitor, Des www.pam.cgia.us for all the info. 88.5 WJIE Day at the Kentucky State Fair is Monday, August 19th, featuring a free concert with Casting Crowds. Jesus, friend of sinners, open our eyes to the world at the end of our pointing fingers. And Red Walker Band, Monday, August 19th, 8 p.m. at Cardinal Stadium. The concert is free with gate admission to the fair from the Kentucky State Fair at 88.5 WJIE. And we welcome you back to the broadcast. And again, I'm standing here with our prayer partners, and we're taking your calls today. And we're going to be praying for Betty, and we're going to be praying for uh, Cassandra and others that are calling in, and we're going to be believing the Lord with you. And so we encourage you to call us. The number is 502-962-9650. Of course, you can also call toll-free if you're outside the local area, 888-613-6080. And we'd love to hear from you. And we're going to be agreeing together. If for some reason you're unable to call us on those numbers, you can always send it in by email to prayer at worldprayercenter.org. That's prayer at worldprayercenter.org. I do want to remind you that we have church tonight. It starts at 7 o'clock at our Miners Lane campus. We invite you to come join with us. There's ministry for all ages. Uh, we have specialized ministry for the youngest infants to uh, say pre-K ages and so forth and then we have elementary age and then high school or junior high high school or middle school I should say in high school I'm dating myself and uh, and then of course we have our worship service in the sanctuary so we invite you to come out and be a part of that before we go off the air today I'll be praying over all the requests that are called in and I hope that you'll make sure you get your call in today just before we share another story with you I do want to remind you again that all this information that we share on the broadcast is available on our Facebook page. That's TV, Word Alive, and you can find us there on Facebook. Just put it in the search bar. And we ask you, if you would, please go there and like us, and then that way you'll be able to keep up to date with information regarding our broadcast. And we've got some special things coming up. We're going to be working in conjunction with WJIE, for example, when WJIE Day at the Fair takes place. And uh, we're going to have some other broadcasts coming to you live from the State Fair. And uh, it's going to be great. We've just been making preparation now to go out and uh, be able to have some good times there at the State Fair and bring them to you there in your homes. So we'll look forward to that. And I hope you'll stay tuned and be a part of that. Today we want to share an incredible testimony that was aired uh, on CBN here recently. It's about a man by the name of John Ramirez. John was... Um, uh, confessed satanic priest. He was involved in the satanic church and uh, had lived his life for the devil and had intended to do so. But he was dramatically transformed and has a powerful testimony. And we want to take a few moments and share this with you because we believe it will encourage you and build your faith. So if you would, stay tuned and hear this testimony. John Ramirez never doubted that there's life after death as a satanic priest, he knew he was going to hell when he died. And that was fine with him, until he took a trip there and came face to face with the devil himself. John Ramirez grew up in the Bronx, where his relatives practiced Santa Rita. My father's side came from a family of witches and warlocks. My father was very heavy into Santa Rita, very heavy into spiritualism. John longed for a relationship with his dad, but his father was abusive. There was no love, there was no compassion. We watched him beat my mother. 
in, in house. He came in drunk most of the time, uh, demanding stuff, asking for stuff. If things wasn't done a certain way, it was always put down, hurtful words, dummy, stupid, you are gonna amount to nothing, that kind of stuff. I would just stand by the door and look and see what he was up to because I was looking to see if there was time for me. Just to have an interaction, right? We did something, my dad and I did something. But he was connected to the demons. He was connected to spiritualism. John's mother was also influenced by Santeria. At his aunt's suggestion, she took John to a tarot card reading. The lady sent the cards. I had 30 days to do a ceremony or I would be blind. So my mother, as a good mother, didn't want nothing to happen to her son, so we did it. They blindfolded me, did a bath for me with herbs, and they started chanting and calling the five main god demons from Santeria. From that moment, John's life changed. My whole personality, everything who I stand for as a young boy, was no longer there. I felt like someone took a black blanket and just put it right over me, spiritually. I wasn't answering not only to my mom and my dad, but I was answering to the demons. John's involvement with Santeria deepened quickly. I was being taught and trained with high-ranked devil worshippers into spiritualism. I went to sink it into funerals acting like I knew the person that died because I wanted to buy the soul or that person that died because I can get that soul and put it on somebody and die the same way. When drug dealers got killed in the street, I wanted to run out and get the blood because I can use that human blood to do witchcraft. For the first time in his life, John felt powerful and respected. People knew that I was a force to be reckoned with. I liked that power. I was talked down to as a young boy. Now I had the authority and the power that I can do whatever I want. When John was 13, his father was murdered in a bar fight. John gave credit to the devil for relieving his mother's suffering. I'd be up at five in the morning calling out to God saying, help my mother, and no one showed up. But the devil showed up because he killed my dad. I believe the devil said, well, no one loves you, but I love you. Your father can't provide for you, but I, I, I'm your provider. The devil said to me, uh, to, to, the, to the religion, I give you anything you want, just ask. John says Satan became the father he never had. John was devoted to him. I light up my candles, I spit the rum. I spit the cigar smoke, the cigar smoke means power. If I didn't have money for a roost, I cut myself and use my own blood and pour it in. The whole atmosphere of the room changes. And you know there's something there. And then when it's there, you have to dress him like a family member. My father, I'm here. What would you like to speak to me about? What is it that you want me to do? As time went on, John also practiced the dark arts outside his apartment. He preyed on Christians in particular. At the clubs, I would go around looking for Christians. And I knew that in the club, you was in the devil's playground. So I knew that if I can get into it and you had a beer tour ready in your system, I knew all I had to do was just say, listen, I have something to tell you today. And right now you will open the door and you said, what is it you need to tell me? You gave me gateway. Eventually, John became a high priest in Palo Mayambe, a form of African spiritualism. As he became more powerful, John took warfare seriously. The devil told me that I had to go into the neighborhood in the spirit realm in order to weaken it in the natural. Whatever you kill in the spirit round, you can kill in the natural. So I will leave my body home and I should project myself into different boroughs, different regions, different states, different countries. And as I followed the neighborhood, I would speak curses into the neighborhood, speak things that I wanted to happen into the neighborhood. Sometimes I will go into neighborhoods and I see this group of people in the spirit round in the corner praying, holding hands, heads bowed, praying up a storm. And there was no accomplishment in that neighborhood. That neighborhood was sanctified, blessed to pray. There was, you couldn't touch it. But the other neighborhoods, it was party time. Around that time, John met a girl who intrigued him. I said, well, you know, I can hang out with her. She's good looking. And she invited me to church. She also invited John to meet her parents, who talked to him about Jesus. They had the Bible out. Hey, listen, we want to talk to you about this. I'm like, oh, I can't come to your house. Your parents are crazy. I said, at least let me digest the food, and then you can talk about this Jesus guy. And then after I leave her, I will go to worship. I will go to double church and kill animals all night long. And then I will come back and see her, but she didn't know. 
John found the Christians amusing and harmless. We had a different system that they had. Their stuff was just kisses, hallelujah, we love you. So I kept coming to church to please her, but I wasn't gonna leave people I was committed to. One Sunday morning, the pastor gave an altar call. John went forward, but wasn't prepared for what happened next. I said, well, the devil can't touch me here. I'm in front of the pastor now. I'm protected. All of a sudden, I got demon possessed. I got them by the throat, picked them up and asked, I came for you. And all these big men came out to see, try to grab me. I was just throwing people around like rag dogs. And then 200 something people got up and raised up hands. Spiritual warfare for a person that would have killed them on a heartbeat. I saw the power of God in the church. One of the guys was whispering back in my ear and say, say Jesus is Lord, say Jesus is Lord, say it, say it. Jesus. I couldn't open my mouth. And then Jesus. suddenly I was able to say, Jesus is, Lord. Jesus is Lord, and the devil left. John was embarrassed about the outburst, but not sure what to do next. One of the church elders approached him a few days later. He said, Jesus wants you to have this. He gave me a sweatshirt. They said, you're a warrior for Christ. For someone to come and say, this is a gift in Christ, because he loves you. To me, that was amazing. I couldn't believe that Jesus loved me. But I was committed to the dark side. I was committed to the demons. I was committed to the devil and I was betwixt two worlds. One night, John decided to end the struggle between the two worlds the only way he knew how. I said, Lord, Jesus can't have me, the devil can't have me, the best way out of suicide. In my ignorance, in my shame, in my, in my mind that was so far gone, spiritually drained, very spiritually drained. John didn't know how to pray, but he began to talk to God. I don't know what they call you, Jesus, whatever they call you in church. I don't like you. I never liked you. I, I never had nothing to do with you. I want no dealings with you. I hate you. I don't want to be part of you. I, don't want to, I never want to be a Christian. I disown you. If that's going to get you away from me, I will worship the devil to the day I die. I whisper saying, if you are bigger than the God that I serve, then you show me tonight or leave me alone. John went to sleep and dreamed he was on a subway. The train was filled with people and the face is a drain, and we were going somewhere that I know that was not good. And as the train was going faster than light, there was a lady dressed very elegant, and she started talking to me in demonic tongues. I understood the tongue, traitor, you're leaving us. So I tried to get into the middle of the train, in the middle of the people, so she won't reach me. Pop hit, and the doors opened, I ended up in hell. John stepped out of the subway and into the darkness. As I went to the tunnels of the hell, the heat wasn't a heat that you feel on earth. It grips you and the fear ropes around you. There's no hope, the hope is removed. As I got to a part of the tunnel, the devil came out, bigger and more strong, I've never seen him like that. And he said to me, I've been with you since you were nine years old. I've been a father to you. I've given you everything. He said, I'm gonna keep you here because if I can keep you here, you won't wake up upstairs, which is on earth. And he said, You belong to me, and you're not gonna leave. You know too many secrets about my religion. And when he went to grab me, to snuff me, this dreadful cross appeared in my hands. I couldn't understand how a cross would appear in my hands. I never called for the cross. I put it on the devil. And he felt like nothing. He felt like he was a, a baby. No powers at the foot of the cross. When John woke up, he was a changed man. And I knew that Jesus was the Lord. I bent my knee to the cross. And Jesus came into my life. I took a white piece of paper and I wrote down a servant, a slave of Jesus Christ. I serve you all the days of my life. John threw out all of his witchcraft paraphernalia, but the battle wasn't over. He was under spiritual attack every night for the next month. At night, I felt a presence come into the room. And then when I would turn around, I would actually sometimes see what was there. 
or sometimes I would just slip around and somehow fall asleep up this way and I would just feel someone's hands just grab me by my throat and try to pick me off of bed and try to rip my body, I rip my soul out of my body. Sometimes they grab by my feet and the bed would shake and it would bring it up and levitate the bed and levitate me to the point that sometimes I might even reach the ceiling and I couldn't breathe and I couldn't cry out, I couldn't talk, I felt like I was choking, I felt like they were choking the life out of me and I would try to call out for Jesus and the words wouldn't come out and then in the end of the world come out, Jesus help me, Jesus help me, save me and it will go away. John didn't understand why God permitted the nightly struggles. I asked the Lord, why did you allow this to happen to me? Why this torment? Why did you allow these people to abuse me this way? I gave my life to you. I told you I would serve you. And he said to me, I wanted to know how much you love me, how much you trust me. And no devil ever showed up to my house ever again. John says he wouldn't trade anything for what he's found in Christ. For 25 years of my life, I was able to do anything to anybody. Anyway, I count that out to be foolish. To gain Christ. He's my own all. He's the breath that I breathe. He walks with me. I can hear the sound of his voice in my ear. Today, John shares the gospel with everyone he can. He has written a book about his experiences called Out of the Devil's Cauldron. I've been victorious in Christ. I got peace. I'm not empty no more. I got fulfillment. I got a purpose and I have a destiny today. And all because I say yes to the cross. And I am an evangelist for the kingdom of light. No more an evangelist for the dark side. I expose the dark side every time the Lord gives me a chance. Because you don't have to die in your sins. You don't have to shed blood. Like in Palamanyumbe, Jesus shed the blood for you. That's the blood that counts. The one at the cross. All right, well that's a powerful testimony. I know some of those images were very strong, but they convey the message of what his life was like before he was delivered by the power of Christ as you saw the cross and the love of Jesus. And you know, there are people that would deny that any of these kind of experiences ever happen uh, in the dark realm. But the reality is there is an invisible spiritual realm of both good and bad, light and dark. And we stand for the power of Christ and His cross and what the blood of Jesus can do to set people free. And we thank God for John's testimony and how he was delivered and set free. We give God all the glory. If you want someone to pray with you today, you can call us at 502-962-9650 or 888-613-6080. We're going to believe God with you. And we thank God for His mighty power to set people free. Uh, today, we're going to go and we're going to have another song. I'll be back with you in a little bit. But as, you're, as we're going to this song, if you need prayer, give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll be back here in just a few moments. Through the long, dark night Out on the open seas By faith alone Sight and know Yet his eyes were watching me. The anchor holds, though the ship is battered. The anchor. I face the raging seas, the anchor holds in spite of the storm. Perhaps this is your story. Ah. 
I've had the shots And I've had dreams And I've even held them in my head Like they were only grains of sand, still the anchor holds, though the ship is battered. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. You know, I can sense the anointing in the presence of the Lord here. And uh, I, I believe some have come here today and there's just been demonic attacks on your life. Maybe you've come here and you've, you've had a demon on you. You feel like there's more demons in your house than there is people in your house. And I've been in places like that before, but I want you to stand up right now. God is going to break those strongholds. God's going to break them right now. God's going to break them right now. In fact, I just want you to come. Just come stand down, right down here. Just come, come down here. Come, come and stand here. Sometimes people get so oppressed and there's so, so many attacks of, the, of Satan upon them. They don't know how to contend with it. They don't know how to stand against it. 
But there's victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to just, just begin to lead us in some worship. I want these singers to stand up. Hallelujah. I want us to lift our hands right now to the Lord. Father, we worship you. Father, we hallow your great name. Father, we praise your great name. Maybe you're here and you've got a member of your family that's under a real demonic attack in your home. Maybe they're suicidal. Maybe they're in their Great Depression. You come down here and stand in for them right now. Come on, lead us, lead us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want our pastors, our pastors and deacons to come and stand with me up here on these steps. Our pastors and deacons, come, come quickly. Stand with me, everyone stand. Come on, lift your hands up to the Lord. Come on, just begin to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Now I want you to begin to lay hands on just everyone, just, just one after another, just after another. Come on, begin to walk through the midst of them. here in the congregation and you need to be up here come on up here maybe you've been going through some real stuff and sometimes you can you can have been an attack of, of demons and the devil can lie to you and, you and you don't even know you're under an attack but I want you to be if you're under some kind of demonic attack come up here God's gonna set you free if you're watching by television or listening on the radio God's gonna get ready to do a miracle right in your home Right in your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Every one of you lift your hands up to the Lord. Father, in the name of the Lord, I rebuke every demon, every devil, every attack, every discouragement. I bind it and cast it off of you and out of you in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against spirits of, of intimidation, spirits that would attack your money, spirits that would come against your family and your children and your marriage I bind it in the name of Jesus Christ everything the devil's told you God says today he's going to do the opposite in the name of Jesus Christ every affliction that's come against you is broken in the name of Jesus Christ I speak healing I speak power I speak God's anointing and peace in your family and in your life in the name of the Lord I speak the joy of the Lord to come in you. The peace of God to come into you today. In Jesus' name, I drive out discouragement. I drive out the demons of hell that have come against you. Oh, come on. Just begin to sing to the Lord. Begin to sing.
Hallelujah. I want everyone to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I belong to you. I'm your property. My body's your territory. My body's the house where you live in. And devil, you're not welcome here. I don't want you in here or any of your garbage, any of your luggage. Get it out of my life. I'll not be discouraged nor defeated nor have a defeated attitude but I'll have an attitude of righteousness and faith in the name of the Lord God's Holy Spirit is on me in me and working through me I'm not going to be sick I'm not going to walk in defeat God's saving my family in Jesus name for the glory of the Lord if you don't learn to stand up against depression and discouragement and times when you don't feel good and times when you feel discouraged you don't feel God's presence and you don't feel maybe God's not well maybe he's not answering me I don't I don't even know if I don't feel I'm even saved unless you learn how to walk by faith and have the word of God in your life the devil will come in and in one bad decision you can lose a daughter, you can lose a son, you can lose your life. And so it's very important if you're in a home and you, you feel the oppression of demons in your home, you've got to learn how to cope against that and how to come against that. And it's not just going around, get out of here, devil, get out of here, devil. You, get, get some music. Get some, get some worship music in that house. I mean, learn, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be a victorious, you gotta learn how to cut his head off. You gotta learn how to, to not just sweep the dirt under the rug. You get some music in there and you start playing and you start worshiping and you pray and you, 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 of course the devil doesn't want you to read the Bible. Of course you're gonna have some opposition. Are you a little milk toast that, you know, unless the wind's blowing the right way, you can't get your kite in the air? Or are you a person of faith that knows how to fight these demons? And you claim your family for God. You know, you may be like those that pastor was just praying with. You feel like you've been under a real attack of the enemy. Well, we want to encourage you to give us a call right now, 502-962-9650, or call 888-613-6080. We have folks standing by, ready to pray with you right now, and we're going to believe God to do something mighty in your life for the power of God. And we're going to be gathering up these prayer requests, and I'll have our partners, if you would, just start passing those to me so that we can begin to pray with the folks. But I want to encourage you, there's still time for you to give us a call because we want to make sure we're praying for you as well as all these that uh, are here already. I want to go ahead and mention some of the ones that have been called in. Uh, we have uh, Naomi's called in for her husband Tim, uh, for their family, for also salvation and healing. Ruby's called in for financial needs. Uh, Carol has called in, uh, her husband's in a wheelchair. Uh, since 1999 because of MS and needs strength. She needs strength and he needs healing as well. We're also praying, Sissy's called in, uh, praying about financial needs, also praying that God will deliver family from debt and from some other issues that they're facing in a legal sense. Uh, Betty's called in, uh, praying uh, that, that God will touch two friends, also bring healing of lung cancer, uh, and do a great miracle in the lives of some of these folks who've been called. Uh, here's someone who's called in. Larry's called in. Uh, says he's got, uh, there's uh, an issue with his left eye and also uh, a miracle that's needed in his throat. So I'm not cl quite clear on all the need there, but Larry, we're lifting you to the Lord today. Barbara's called in for Tiffany. This is a very... Uh, urgent need. I'm not going to discuss all the details, but it uh, has to do with uh, a baby, and it's a very 
difficult circumstance that they're going through. And we're just going to pray that God will intervene and that Tiffany will turn her life over to God, and to the Lord for His plan and purpose. Uh, today, again, you have an opportunity to call us, 502-962-9650. Prayer partners are standing by. They're ready to pray with you. You know, prayer is one of the great blessings of God. Prayer is something that gives us an avenue to the very throne of grace. It tells us in the scripture in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Did you hear that scripture? I want you to hear it again because it's, it's a powerful word to us to build confidence and faith that God can move on our behalf. And it goes this way. It says, Let us therefore come boldly or with assurance and confidence to the throne of grace. What is the throne of grace? Well, we know that Jesus has ascended into the heavenlies and He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And He's there ever interceding for us. And His throne is a throne of grace. But grace is not just the same as mercy. Sometimes they, they get coupled together. But grace has a sense of empowering as well. He'll give us the grace. He'll give us the strength and the ability to get through the situations that we face in life. And he says that we can come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy. How many of you know sometimes the trouble that we get in, the problems that we're dealing with, um, are partly our fault. Now, I don't want this to become a heavy burden that's placed upon you, but sometimes we've done things, made mistakes, whether innocently or on purpose, that have brought upon ourselves some of the problems that we're facing. But regardless, whether you did or did not, obviously there are some times that problems come your way that were not of your doing. It was just an attack from the enemy against you. But when you face those kinds of circumstances, you need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is mercy. Mercy. I want you right there at home to say that word. Say mercy because God wants to move on your behalf and have mercy upon you. And it says, come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace or that strength, that impartation, that divine help from God, that gifted help from the Lord in your time of need. And so this is the time to call. The scripture tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, Make your requests known unto God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We're going to pray today, and we're in agreement with you and all the requests that have been called in. We're going to trust the Lord to meet you today. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for every person that is called in today. You know the needs of their life. You know those that they're reaching out for today. Lord, not only these that I've mentioned, but all the calls that are coming in now, all the people that are here right now believing God for something mighty in their life. Lord, we pray that the power of Satan will be broken off of them. We plead the blood of Jesus over them. And we declare victory today that you will triumph over every circumstance of their life that has been an attack against them and that the power of the Lord will come into their lives to heal and to make whole and well to the glory of God. Father, I thank you for touching people today. I thank you for drawing them by your power. Lord, may they sense your love and your mercy in their life. God, we declare grace and strength to help in this time of trouble. And God, do mighty exploits on their behalf. May they realize that the presence of God can transform their situation. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. For your glory and honor, we pray. And we thank you, God. May every need be met physically, financially, in their families, in every area of their life, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, we appreciate those of you who have called in and and you continue to trust the Lord, there's still time. We have just a few moments here in the broadcast. There's still requests that are coming in. Your requests are prayed over just the same. 
you're unable to call, you can always send it in by email. Send it to prayer at worldprayercenter.org. You can also uh, contact us through Facebook. We have information, some of the things that you saw here today on the broadcast, uh, other details of upcoming events and special happenings. As I mentioned shortly, we're going to be broadcasting live from the State Fair as it gets underway here soon. And so we've got a lot of great things coming up, but our number one focus is always to pray for you and to minister to you. And so you take advantage of that. If you want to look us up on Facebook, go to tvwordalive.com, or excuse me, TV Word Alive in the search bar. And of course, if you'd like to find out more details about our church and our schedule and upcoming events and great things that are happening, you know we've got Ivan Tate coming in August, in September, we're having our Church Growth International of the Americas Conference. And as you saw earlier, on Saturday night, to kick off the conference and also to be the award ceremony for our Fine Arts Festival for our youth, on that Saturday night, we're going to have Des Duran, uh, of course, who was one of, the, one of the finalists. He made it into the top group on The Voice. And so he'll be with us, and uh, his father will also be here. He'll be preaching. So we'll look forward to seeing you at that event, and I know it's going to be a great time. So God bless you. We look forward to seeing you again soon here on Word Alive. Word Alive is a production of Bob Rogers Ministries in Louisville, Kentucky. For more information on the outreach of this ministry or to become a partner, visit bobrogersministries.org. And remember to like us on Facebook and Ustream, just search TV Word Alive.